and welcome to this video which is on problem solving. As a recap, my name is David Kenny and I work at the Mersey Care Early Intervention Psychosis Service as a family therapist. And this video is one of a few videos that's designed to help the families that we work with recap on some of the work that we may have done already. We hope it can also be used for other families in Mersey Care or not in Mersey Care just to help them while this crisis forces us all indoors together to socially distance or isolate ourselves. So to understand problem solving, we probably should start with what is problems? What are problems? The definition of a problem is a matter or situation regarded as unwelcome or harmful and needing to be dealt with and overcome. I should say I don't personally agree with the last part of that sentence which I'll come to a little bit later. So the reason why problem solving is part of our family work. Firstly, all families experience challenges and problems, and it's often what brings people into family therapy in the first place. Specific to psychosis, there's lots of research and evidence out there that would say it's actually stress, or the feeling of being stressed, and the impact of stress can actually make symptoms worse. So if we were to reduce the stress that families and service users experience, logically, we might see less of those symptoms. Whilst I agree in part with that, I do feel that we can't just get rid of stressful, of stress or stressful situations from our lives. So we do do a little bit of let's work on problem solving, but we also talk a lot more about service users and families' relationship, relationship to problems, challenges and the stress that they face. So whenever we do this work, it's really important that we understand how families currently respond to anything stressful. For example, some family members might face a challenge head on very quickly, almost too quickly for the rest of the family members. Other members of the family might avoid the problem or potentially leave it to other members of the family to sort out and deal with. In some situations, you might have one family member who is desperately trying to solve problems of another family member who doesn't want that member of the family to help them. As I said, all families are unique, all families are different, so it's important we spend time understanding how families face challenges that we do. What's also important is to understand that when I say problems, I know that they may vary from very small minor day-to-day -day problems to ex extremely big overwhelming problems that affect the whole family and whilst this crisis is happening I'm aware that lots of people have lost their income lots of people are at risk of dying so this problem solving presentation isn't designed to help people solve problems for those big overwhelming distress and worries However, they may be more useful for some of those minor, troubling, and bothersome problems that you still might experience day to day. I said earlier that I don't necessarily agree that problems should be, should be dealt with or overcome straight away. And in fact, there's some philosophies out there that would say that actually a problem is also an opportunity. So when we do this family work, we often work with families and pull out what have they learned from the difficulties, what have they learned about themselves in response to those challenges. The reason I do that, or the reason why that's a feature of family therapy, is so that people have, uh, can progress, learn and develop themselves and develop a competence or confidence in the face, in the challenges that they face. So here is one way or one process of understanding how to problem solve. The top one, define the problem. It's quite important because unless we know what it is we're dealing with and why it's a problem, this might confuse the process and confuse the issue. Once that's been agreed, next we could write down potential solutions. My advice would be not to write down too many, but say three or four potential solutions seems adequate. Then you'd compare each and every solution and write down its pros and cons. Potentially one solution is time consuming, whereas the other solution might be expensive. Or one would get rid of the problem now, 
but the problem might come back at a later date. You then pick your favourite solution. Which one stands out as the most reasonable to use right now? And you'd simply give it a go and try it out. Lastly, you'd review how you did with the whole process. This gets family members talking a little bit more, a little bit differently, about how they solve problems, how they face challenges that they face. We can help facilitate those conversations when we meet. But it's important that families do this themselves anyway. And if a family member wasn't happy with how somebody else dealt with a problem, then it can be discussed. Equally, if a family member is really happy with how somebody helped the process move along, that can also be discussed too. Online, there are lots of other processes and shapes and colours that also help display the same kind of process. So that does bring us to the end. And one thing to say, like I said earlier, it's really important that families are treated as unique and different and their own network of working. So we don't push any one process. We simply are interested in how families do their own problem solving. And we might introduce some of our, our own ideas. So maybe our own families is what often can help. So we hope this was helpful and quite useful and look out for our other videos. Thank you.